Family is truly a wonderful thing, wouldn't you agree? Parents who want the best for their children, siblings building each other up, and eventually a spouse who loves their significant other to get offspring of their own, creating a cycle of love and compassion. Everyone have a family, whether they like it or not. We're all in this together. Yes, we are. We're all stars. That means something, you know it. And because of this, it is a perfect tool to create a piece of fiction that people can immerse themselves in. Tons of video games focuses on family, like Darksiders, which is about an individual being imprisoned for something he hasn't done, so his sibling jumps to help. Or Fallout 3, where the hero's father disappears, potentially getting taken. So the protagonist springs into action. Love is the power that brings family together, and one of the oldest we have in video games are the Mishima household from the legendary fighter series Tekken. The reason for this series' reputation lies with the fact that it actually has a fully fledged story behind the events of these games. Focusing on the previously mentioned family, the Mishimas, with Heiachi, the father of the protagonist of the first game, standing in front of the rest. So, we have seen brotherly love in Darksiders and the child's quest to find his lost father in Fallout 3. What heartwarming family story will Tekken give us? Well, that's neat. I've always been aware of Tekken because of how big the series is, but I have no knowledge on its narrative, so... Uh, how does the newest game, Tekken 7, which came out this year in the West, 2017, end? The fuck?! They killed off Heiachi? Isn't he a video game icon? The face of Tekken that's been around for as long as I've lived is dead? Isn't that a big deal? Because of this, I did some research as I wondered who this man was. People have always said that Heiachi is one of the most evil fathers in gaming. And as always, I'll go all the way back into his past to see how a man could commit filicide. Long before the beginning of the first game, we're talking about even before the birth of Kazuya, Heihachi Mishima lived a quiet life with his father, Jinpachi, the founder of the Mishima Saibatsu, a multinational conglomerate, which means a combination of two or more corporations engaged in entirely different businesses. During this time, the Saibatsu wasn't as powerful as it would become, as during an interview with the director of the game, Katsuhiro Harada, it was mentioned that it was Heiachi who built the financial empire when he became the CEO, and not Jinpachi, whose only income came from his dojo, as he wanted the Mishima legacy to be the martial arts style they created. Heiachi cared only about becoming a master martial artist under his father's tutelage, but one day a young girl came to the dojo also to learn the Mishima style of karate, and her name was Kazumi Hashijo. The two fighters instantly became friends, training for years together, turning into rivals as they were equals and eventually found love. Carving their names on the floor in the dojo, an expression of love, they knew that they were destined to be together, which turned into marriage. Heiachi and Kazumi were happy, living peacefully together, doing what they have a passion for, training to perfect the art known as karate. And when the heir of the Saibatsu turned 26, the couple got a child, Kazuya Mishima. They were now a full family. Only world peace could compare to the happiness that Heiachi felt the next five years, feeling content with this life that he's built for himself. A loving, beautiful wife, a son already being trained in martial arts, following in the footsteps of his father, of whom followed his own. But then, at the age of 31, Kazumi started to change. So much, in fact, that the man thought she might suffer from a personality disorder, as it went so far that his wife attacked her husband out of the blue. Falling ill one night, he actually did everything he could to help her. Then, something he could never have expected happened. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Kazumi was actually sent by the Hachijo clan, which is composed of human devil hybrid assassins who executes people who may be a threat to the world. And that is what the family prophesied when it came to the future leader of the Mishima Saibatsu, a world burning under his wrath. Kazumi herself was torn on her part, as she was born to fulfill this act, yet her love was something that came from her own choices, not that of her family, which is why her spirit still lingers in guilt after her death. Unable to control her devil gene, she went to assassinate a future tyrant, only to truly set him on that path. And so, they fought. Knowing his life would be forfeit without protecting himself, as Kazumi was not only his equal but also a powerful devil, he fights back with everything he got. 
pained by what he has to do. The Devil G, now fully taken over his wife, does not stop attacking, making Heiachi only see a monster in front of him, a demon that killed the person he wants to spend his whole life with. The Devil. Which is why he does what no one should have to do. Heiachi kills Kazu. <laughs> Feeling pure pain by this act, this in turn started the cycle of hatred. Hearing from the devil that the Hachio family has done this for millennia, he realizes that his own son might have this devil gene. And when seeing Kazuya standing in front of him, hate in his eyes as he only knows the fact that his father killed his mother, believing that hatred was the reason for this act, not knowing what happened, he himself understands what the demonic power might do to the world in the future. Which is why he throws his own son down the cliff. Full of rage, he took the Mishima Saibutsu by force from his father, as he blamed Jinpachi for Kazumi's death. His father did try to retake the company when Heiachi wanted to go into the military business, but this only further angered him, sending his only living family that he was aware of to starve to death in a cell underneath Hon Maru. Now fully in control of the conglomerate, Heiachi started building it up both financially and in influence, as he has now one goal in his life, to create the world peace that he has always wanted, knowing that Kazumi would have wanted that herself, as she detested violence. 20 years go by, and the Mishima Saibatsu is a powerhouse of a financial empire. Empire, though peace was still only a dream at this point. It is during this time the last Mishima, now at the age of 52, realizes that he is definitely not the last, as word goes by that Kazuya has traveled worldwide to several martial arts tournaments, coming out on top in all of them. Which worries the man, as it can only mean that the devil gene truly exists within his son. Knowing that he would have to act fast, the CEO of the multinational conglomerate announced the first King of Iron Fist tournament, where the winner would gain a large amount of money. Why start a fighting tournament, you might wonder? Well, he actually knew that his son would eventually seek revenge for what happened to Kazumi, and he knew that Kazuya wouldn't let this opportunity go to waste, and he was right. Taking the bait, the son entered the tournament, and as the father expected, got all the way to the final fight. Readying himself up to end the devil gene, Heiachi stood his ground to defeat the demon. However, while he did indeed defeat his wife, he did not properly train while building up his company for all of those years, which is why he lost to Kazuya, who threw him off the same cliff as Payback, feeling satisfied with... <laughs> you serious? Kazuya believed his father dead. But fate had other plans for him as he climbed up from that hellhole. Realizing that he was too weak, he went into hiding to train and meditate. And while doing so, Kazuya took over the business and already one could see the devil's influence take over. Sending assassins against people who tried to end corruption, he extorted money from smaller businesses and organizations. He smuggled endangered species to conduct genetic experiments on them and so much more. After two years of preparation, Heiachi made himself known to Kazuya through rumors, causing the corrupted devil to tauntingly announce a second King of Iron Fist tournament, believing that he can kill off all competition while also making sure to truly finishing off his mother's murderer. During this time, an animal rights activist, Jun Kazama, tries to arrest Kazuya for his inhumane experiments. However, due to something supernatural, this confrontation ends up with them getting together, with Kazuya impregnating this woman which in turn fragmented his own mind into a good being and the already evil one. This conflict causes problem for the young man during his second fight with his now stronger father, being beaten rather easily. But as his veins are filled with more hate than love, he finally turns into what he actually holds a hatred towards, the devil. But even with the devil's inane strength, he actually fought the mother of the devil gene and now was prepared, this time making sure to throw the demon into the lava of the devil's pit. Back in the reigns at the Mishima Saibatsu, Heiachi is now certain that the devil gene is gone, taking the time to rebuild relations with the world by starting up the private army known as the Tekken Force, sending them around the globe to settle disputes and bring wasteland under cultivation. And this gains the support from world leaders, as Heiachi tries to create the peace he has longed for through diplomatic measures. Fifteen whole years later, a Tekken Force unit uncovers a being with an insane amount of power, the god of fighting, the Ogre. Having already seen what exists out there in the world, he actually knows the only way to truly keep world peace is with an iron fist, which is why he wanted to capture said beast to make a weapon capable of stopping other powerful beings. The one thing he could never have prepared himself for happening the same year, Jin Kazama, son of Kazuya, shows up at his doorstep 
seeking his grandfather's help to defeat the ogre who took the life of his own mother. Huh. Mother seems to be a theme in this series. Who would have thought? Anyways, he actually did take in the young 15 year old into his home, keeping an eye out if Jin has a devil gene, hoping that maybe it could skip a generation. Maybe he could finally get a grandson who he could love. Four years under Hayashi's tutelage, Jin turned into a powerful fighter, but during this time he also started to show signs of having the same power of the devil, of which Hayashi feels sadness for, as we can see it in his arcade ending, looking depressed as he throws Jin out of a helicopter. To lure out the ogre, Heiachi announces the third King of Iron Fist tournament, as the beast searches for fighters to collect their key. Getting through the whole tournament, Jin met his mother's killer, who turned into an atrocity to drain him of his key, but it failed. Using his power, Jin caused the beast to explode, making it impossible for Heiachi to use it as a peacekeeping weapon. And when Jin Kazuma turned around to celebrate with his grandfather, his father figure, he was shut down by a Tekken Force unit. Looking up, not understanding why, a bullet flew into his skull from a man doing everything in his power to stop the devil. Though that demonic power is truly something to behold as Jin stood up, decimating the military unit and smashed Heiachi's glorious bald head through the temple, flying away as the King of Iron Fist looked on, stunned. Seriously, that thing is cleaner than Mr. Clean. Not willing to let his ambition go, Heiachi has his researchers gain the remains of the ogre to see if they could use it to create a new weaponized life form. After two years of looking through the data, they concluded that they would need the devil gene to combine such a being. Knowing that he could get two birds with one stone, Heiachi started a massive search for his grandson, which eventually led him to something truly interesting. A photo of Kazuya's remains. Realizing that his body would work, the search led the Mishima Saibatsu to the G Corporation, a cutting edge biotech firm that seems to have taken an interest in the devil gene, which he actually would not accept. Sending two units, one to steal their research, while the other goes to collect his son's body, he looks on from a distance, only to see that the devil, having been revived roughly 20 years ago after their battle, fighting off the Tekken Force unit, and getting away. Kazuya had actually realized while at the G-Corp facility that he only had a fragmented piece of the devil gene as part of it was destroyed by his father and his inner turmoil so he wanted to find his own son in hope of collecting that evil power for himself. Being absolutely livid of what just happened, Heiachi announced the fourth King of Iron Fist tournament putting the entire Mishima financial empire as the winning prize. Knowing this would not only get his son to join but also the revenge seeking grandson. And he was right, as he captured Jin during the tournament, chaining him up in a devil gene suppressing material and led Kazuya to him after his loss. The devil finally made itself known to Heiachi, showing hatred towards the old man after its defeat all those years ago. Trying to drain Jin of his power, Kazuya managed to gain control again, only to see a pissed off devil gene who easily dispatched both of his family members. Reading up to kill his grandfather, Jin hesitates, as the memory of his mother reminded him of who he truly was, making him spare the hateful man. Flying off yet again, leaving Kazuya and Heiachi to themselves. Maybe to work things out? JK! <laughs> the G Corporation had actually sent several Jack 4 robots to kill off the father and the son, but Kazuya were able to get away to search for the people responsible for the attack, as he is filled with nothing but hatred and revenge. He actually was not that lucky though, ending up in a coma after the massive explosion. Now, he is actually in a coma for the whole of the 5th King of the Iron Fist tournament, so I won't go into what happened in here, but the conclusion is that Jin Kazuma takes over the Mishima Saibatsu, and Kazuya takes control of the G Corporation after killing off every member who were behind the Jack 4 attack. Being now in the control of the massive conglomerate, which had created peace in the world, Jin instantly started creating chaos, rendering other countries' military force useless, taking over oil fields and other energy producing resources, while declaring the Saibatsu's independence, literally starting World War III. His main enemy being the G Corporation under Kazuya Mishima. Jin did all of this to fill the world with negative energy to revive Azazel, a demonic figure of whose death could potentially destroy the Devil Jin, which was Jin's plan all along even starting up the 6th King of Iron Fist tournament in the hope of defeating his evil father. But as he did indeed defeat the monstrous Azazel, the Devil Jin did not vanish. And while Jin was recovering from that fight, Heiachi went to the Saibatsu headquarters to reclaim what was his. Using force to beat the living hell out of anyone in his way, he goes Napoleon on their asses, making everyone accept him as their leader. As he wants to return the Saibatsu to the peace ruling powerhouse that it once were, as its influence diminished during the war against the G Corporation. 
Knowing that everyone believes him dead, Heiachi announces not only his return, but also the seventh King of Iron Fist tournament to the world, piquing the interest of every fighter, also his own son, who always had the notion of his survival. The reason for this sudden tournament was actually to show the globe watching that Kazuya was in fact a demon, making public opinion return to Heiachi as it now was for the G Corporation as they stood against a warmongering Jin. And one important part of getting the favor of the public is to get the Archers of Sirius, an exorcist group, into the conglomerate, as when the devil is revealed to the world who best to appease the people than demon hunters. Gaining the support from this group with an iron fist and a photo of Kazuya's dark form, they work together to locate Jin as well, as Heihachi wants to finally finish this horrible bloodline. However, as the 75 year old man meditates in his dojo, he gets an unexpected guest. Nobody expects the battle bugger! Attacked by Akuma, who was asked to kill both Heiachi and Kazuya by Kazumi before her death, Heiachi was shocked by this revelation, but before he could get any more information, a battle started. Being defeated, Akuma thought him dead, only to show the world that the Mishima leader is not someone you can kill that easily. And easily a new plan formed in his mind as he makes the Saibatsu give out news that he was dead and that the tournament was off. He knew that Akuma would target his son next and after seeing the world warrior's strength first hand, he realized that Kazuya would have to use his inner devil to fight off the street fighter. While the two demons fight, he actually hesitates in doing what he has planned as he believes that Akuma might know something about his late wife. But as he has accepted that there is no way to change the past, he activates Dr. Abel's legacy, a satellite weapon, to destroy the two fighters in one fell swoop. Believing himself victorious, he actually sends out the footage of the devil, turning the public against the G Corporation, making him ready to give the world the peace it once had. But as Kasuya shoots down the satellite in rage, the father realizes that there's only one way to truly kill off these monsters, by fighting them with his bare hands. Sending a location to his son, Kazuya and Heihachi met where they knew it would all had to end. The devil spit. And here we have the final confrontation between the son, a young man who got thrown off of a cliff by his own father, who he believes killed his mother in cold blood. He himself fueled by rage. And the father, a bitter old man who once only wanted a family, blaming the devil gene for taking away the person he cared most about in this entire world, his wife, Kazumi. His actions fueled by sorrow as he sees his son who turned into the being that took everything away from him. Their battle lasted long, and when Kazuya finally turned into the complete devil, Heihachi exclaims that he has waited for this, having waited to kill the devil that took away his family. But no matter how strong he is, no matter how great his willpower is, he fails. Because while the husband of Kazumi indeed does have an iron will, so does the son. Seeing not his father in front of him, but the killer of his mother, which is why he uses all of his strength, demonic and more, to kill the king of Iron Fist, making the man fall to his death. Heiachi Mishima was once a young man, filled with happiness and love, as he only cared to stay with his family, needing nothing else, who turned into an old, bitter, spiteful man, blaming everyone around him for Kazumi's death, feeling sadness as he throws his own son down the cliff, disappointed that his own grandson has the devil gene as well, believing that the only way he can feel happy again would be by creating world peace. But through everything, the devil always returned in one way. From his wife, to his son, to his grandson, creating a cycle of rage and sorrow. Turning a loving husband into a murderous father. And that is the mind of Heihachi Mishima. Oh, Kurosta. Oh. <laughs> 
平八さんを愛していますそして平八さんも私のこと Hi there, thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope that you enjoyed it, maybe as much as I enjoyed making this piece of art. For those who are huge fans of Tekken, you might have seen that there are a couple of individuals that I did not take a focus on in this video, like Lars or Lee, and that's because I didn't feel like they were important to the whole Mishima bloodline, so there's that, sorry about that. <laughs> Plus there's the link of the whole video. Anyways, I will now try to make in the minds of a more, you know, don't expect three months between every single in Mano. I can promise you that. Anyways, see you guys next time.